how's it going everybody welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about suspension uh, geometry um, this is very important before you lift your Jeep <laughs> Need to watch this video because there's tons of lift kits out there that come with the bare minimum to get you off of the ground and there's tons of lift kits that come with everything that you need or there's lift kits out there that come with stuff that you it just gets you by um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of these lifts and what's important under your jeep to make it drive like a stock jeep i don't know how many comments that i get that i've lifted my jeep and it drives like garbage. I have a video right here and I'll leave it at the end of this video. You can check out what to do after you lift your Jeep and uh, why it drives the way it does. But today we're gonna be talking about suspension parts and why it's important that you need to get these parts with your lift kit. Um, so keep this in mind when you're buying a budget lift kit throughout this video. I'm guilty of it myself. I buy budget lift kits. But what I end up doing is piecing the kits together in the future to save money right off hand, but gets me off the ground so I can go jeeping. And the reason why I do that is because I'll deal with the rough ride and the bounciness or the body roll for now. I just want to get out there and wheel. I mean, that's perfectly fine. But the way I have my both of my Jeeps set up right now, they'll go 90 mile an hour down the highway and it's no problem. They'll drive straight. There's no pulling. There's no rough ride. There's no bump steer because when it came to my Cherokee, when I built it, I pieced together the lift, but we did it right. Same way with my Wrangler. We pieced together the lift, but everything's in spec. So therefore it drives perfect. So let's get under the Jeep and start looking at these parts and explain to you what they do and why they're important. So we're going to be talking about the lower control arms and the upper control arms. You got one over there, one over there. You got your lower control arms. Now, basically, all Jeep Cherokees and Wranglers have this setup. Um, it's a straight axle design, and mostly people watching this video have this setup. Um, so, we're going to be talking about the lower control arms, and what this actually helps with is caster and pinion angle. All right. So, these don't really do anything with side to side, but your lower control arms keep the front end front and back it holds it from going you know front and you know wobbling front and back so the reason why you'd want longer control arms or uh, adjustable control arms is of caster and pinion angle this is your pinion now a lot of people now from the factory these are set up perfect for perfect caster and perfect pinion angle so when you go to lift a jeep what this does, the whole axle comes down and it starts going back towards the Jeep, towards you, the driver. So when you lift a Jeep with stock control arms and stock uppers, your axle is going to go down and this way. So it throws your caster out and your pinion angle. Now, how to correct that? You need to get adjustable or fixed length for your lift, lower control arms, not mostly upper, but upper adjustable uppers will help. Uh, but a lot of people just throw on lower control arms to get the caster right. Um, but so you'll need either fixed length for your your lift, or you'll need adjustable, um, so you can really dial that caster in. Now, when you dial that caster in to get the perfect caster angle, um, you have to keep in mind of your pinion angle because if you get that too much on a bind or get it too sharp it'll actually wear your u-joints out and you may get vibration so that's another thing you need to keep in mind is lower control arm um, the fixed length or the adjustable see if it comes in your kit anything over two inches um, you're going to need adjustable or fixed length lower control arms another thing is your angle the higher you go with a short arm lift the more this thing is at an angle it will ride super rough um, so if it's at a super uh, steep angle, you need to get lower brackets to lower it flat, and that'll help with the ride. Um, how to know your caster's out? The steering wheel will not center back. Um, it'll kind of, you kind of have to center it back yourself, and it'll kind of wander all over the road. Um, if your pinion angle's out really bad, it'll make a vibration and it will bind. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're lifting a Jeep. Now, another thing we're gonna be talking about is the track bar. Your track bar mounts to your axle and goes to your frame. 
Don't get it confused with your steering box, your drag link that goes to your tie rod end and it goes to your steering knuckle. So your track bar will come from the axle. It goes to the frame. Now, when you lift your Jeep, what happens is the track bar goes down and it starts pulling to the right. This keeps your axle centered um, under the Jeep. So the more you lift it with a stock track bar, the more it goes down and over. Um, so as you can see, I got an adjustable track bar on mine and this helps me center my axle and it helps me keep everything in line. Another thing, a lot of people will run a stock track bar and they'll get a lower track bar bracket instead of adjustable one. And what this does is it throws your drag link and your track bar out of parallel. You want these to be as parallel as possible. Out of parallel, when you hit a bump, it moves in an arc. So if they are not the same angle, it will move at different rates and it will cause bump steer and it'll cause horrible driving uh, symptoms. So always remember to, when you lift a Jeep and if you do a lower track bar bracket, make sure you compensate with a lower pitman arm to keep all this stuff level because if none of this stuff is level nothing will work together if they're out of parallel they'll move at different rates and it'll cause bump steer it'll cause poor handling on the road and over bumps so make sure your drag link and all that stuff is in parallel but if you're going to be running four to five six you know four to six inches you may have to uh weld on a bracket on your axle side to bring that up and make it level just to give you an idea what I'm talking about, this is my Jeep Cherokee. And as you can see, the drag length and the track bar is actually parallel with one another. And I'm sitting at six inches. So how I had to achieve that was actually weld on this adjustable bracket so I could get my angles right. Everything will work together and it'll make it drive way better and the steering will be way better and the ride quality be, will be way better. So make sure you keep that in mind when you lift a vehicle, these always have to be parallel. Whether you have to weld a bracket on or drop something, make sure they are always parallel. Another thing we're gonna be talking about is sway bars. Um, they are good to get um, because when you lift a Jeep, this will actually go down. It'll cause kind of a rough ride and it'll also make the body roll worse. And if you go off-road with your short sway bars, I've seen them go this way. They invert and they start to bend. And then you have this jammed in your steering linkage. Um, so make sure when you get a vehicle lifted over two inches that you have the sway bar either parallel or a little bit up like mine is. That way it gives you the droop you need and it don't cause a bunch of body roll. So this basically goes for any straight axle design, uh, any Jeep XJ wrangler you know anything that has this front axle and when it comes to the newer wranglers that have the track bars in the back um honestly just make sure that that track bar center and is flat as you can get it and there's good sway bars back there and uh some decent lower control arms and you're good in the back of the wranglers where things come into play is actually your front end and you know your bump steer the wandering and stuff like that so what i explained to you is the lower control arms that gets your caster right um, a lot of people buy the upper control arms too to scoot their axle a little forward um, and if they run out of adjustments on the bottom lower control arms they'll use the upper to get that caster just right now um, when it comes to the track bar i recommend getting a adjustable track bar um, that way you have adjustability even if you go a little higher in the future um, and when it comes to the bracket i don't recommend dropping a track bar i recommend buying a track bar relocation on your axle side and welding that on and also your drag length make sure that stuff is parallel it all has to work together in order for a jeep to drive stock and comfortably and stuff like that so so what did we learn today we need to make sure the lower control arms at are at the right length to get your caster right but we also need to watch our pinion angle so we need to find that happy medium when it comes to um the track bar i recommend being adjustable that keeps the axle centered make sure it is parallel with the drag length that way it drives smooth there's no bump steer and everything works together so when you're hitting a bump it all works together not this up here and this is going down and this is going down and it's causing all kinds of binding issues and stuff like that 
Same way with the sway bars, keeps the body from rolling. Um, I got quick connects, so I can go ahead and take mine off when I'm off-road. I know a lot of people was like, you know, you can run these things with no sway bars and they feel great. Um, but honestly, the weight that I have on my Cherokee and my Wrangler nowadays, I got armor, rock sliders, and stuff like that. The wind catches this thing and it really rolls on the highway. So sway bars are important on road, but they're not very important off-road to me. So just make sure you get a good set of adjustable sway bar links. Now, another problem is a lot of people will lift the Jeep. They'll get all these things almost right, and they won't get their alignment quite, quite right. They'll always take it to a shop and spend two to $300 uh, because, you know, you have big 35s and you got all this adjustable stuff. So they'll charge you big money. Honestly, you don't need to do that. You can do it right here in your driveway with a tape measure and all that good stuff, which I have videos on my channel of all that, how I align my Jeep caster all that stuff in my driveway i never went to a shop and the jeep drives perfectly down the road straight it doesn't wear tires and it does great so you can do all this stuff in your backyard i hope this helped you out before you buy a lift kit because there's tons of lift kits out there and i hopefully and hopefully this helps you decide what you want and where your money needs to be spent so i hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure you give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet i'm cherokee ronnie stay dirty my friends